33 verses 32 to 43. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there held insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Hello everybody, uh, all my friends at uh, Reynold and uh, other people I don't know, my name's Alan and uh, I'm folks and I've been asked to do this this afternoon. I hope you feel comfortable with, uh, or this morning actually, isn't it? Uh, I hope you feel comfortable with uh, all these things. Um, I'm still learning how to use things and making lots of mistakes. Anyway, um, we... I expect other people have said when they've spoken that we live in amazing times, don't we? And uh, confusing times as well. And um, scary times. Um, I don't think I've had this virus. I don't, I only know one or two people that have had it. Don't know them very well. I don't know anybody that's died, although I know of people that have died uh, through it. Um, and what, you really want to say to people at this time is, are you sure you're a Christian? And how do you become a Christian? That's what I'd like to talk about this morning for, for a little while. Are you sure you're a Christian? And how do you become a Christian anyway? And I want to do that using a, an illustration from the Bible, which is um, a very vivid illustration it's a, a story and a very very uh, amazing story it's a famous story uh, I looked at my notes and I did speak on it at Reynolds once before and that was in 1984 can you believe that so um, some of the very old people I know there were one or two very very old people Ken I'm not mentioning anybody apart from you uh, in Reynolds you may remember me speaking on this in 1984 but it's the story of the dying thief so just picture the scene when the lord jesus christ dies on the cross of calvary there he is hanging for hour after hour in absolute agony what a lot of people don't realize is that there was more than one cross there's three crosses and one of them has this man who's become known as the dying thief on one cross and another dying thief on the other cross. And we read about this, and in particular, in the reading that we had, which is from Luke chapter 23, and in particular from verse 32 to verse 43. And that's the bit that I'm going to be focusing on. So I'm using this as, a, as an illustration of how to answer the question, are you sure you're a Christian? And secondly, uh, what's it mean to be a Christian anyway? I grew up uh, in Bedford and Goldington, and uh, until I was 18, I'd never, never crossed my mind what the answer to those questions, questions were. I just never thought about it. I was a young fellow, I was a teenager, never crossed my mind uh, about becoming a Christian. Uh, didn't know that you had to become a Christian. That was all news to me when I found out about that. So here we have this amazing story 
of this chap um, who does turn to Christ in his right at the end of his life and he does become a Christian and he does go to heaven we're absolutely certain of that because Jesus said that he would go that day to be with him in paradise you may say well where is heaven well heaven is where Jesus is and if you don't want to be or anybody doesn't want to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in paradise then obviously uh, this is not for you and you you won't be in heaven but paradise is where Jesus is and this man just have a little look at what it says about him it actually says in one of the other passages the parallel passages to this that he was one of those for example we're talking about Matthew chapter 27 verse 44 he along with the other dying thief um, sort of railed at Jesus and scorned him and was very bitter but something happened to change him and he turned around and went in the other direction so just think about this man for a moment there he is he is a wicked man he says so himself he says uh, we are getting what our deeds deserve he was a thief he was quite possibly a murderer he was quite possibly an associate of barabbas is another man in the bible condemned by the law of the land in which he lived condemned by his own verdict how could someone like that become a christian how could someone like that go to heaven but he did <laughs> because jesus said he did but he was wicked he was dying he hung on a cross from which he would never come down alive. This is a cross next to the Lord Jesus Christ. Think of some other things about him. He had no power or, or ability to save his own soul because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about eternity and saving souls. He couldn't do that for himself. His hours were numbered. The grave was ready for him. There was but a step between him and death. A man says that in the Old Testament. There is but a step between me and death, said King David. And that was the, the, the situation with this dying thief. Uh, the other thief rails at the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and insults him. But this chap, he rebukes his companion. This, this, first, this other thief, I would call him the first one if you like. And that really is... The beginning of uh, an indication that something's changing in his heart you know when you hear someone standing up for the lord jesus christ and shall we say defending him not that he needs any defending but you know what i mean you start to think well maybe there's something happening in this person's life there was a reverence that started to come over him do you not fear god he said to his to his uh companion we and we we we're getting what we deserve and then he says of of the lord jesus this man has done nothing wrong he's done nothing amiss he, he's perfect not like us we are punished justly he says in verse 41 we are getting what our deeds deserve but this done this man jesus has done nothing wrong and so there is a change that's taking place i wonder why you think that change occurred i think there is a clue and a reason given in the bible for that he has a change of his thinking and a change of heart as well and then he turns to the lord jesus christ and he prays had he ever prayed before maybe he had not i don't know but he says if you just have a look at verse 42 he prays jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom in the authorized version it says lord remember me when you come into your kingdom many many people would say you're wasting your time mate you're too bad you're it's too late for you you've made your decisions mercy has passed you by but that's not what we find in the in the bible and then we get Jesus's amazing reply to him where he says in in answer to the man's prayer 
In verse 43, he says, Jesus says this, I tell you the truth, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. What? Do you know the man got far more than he asked for? He just asked to be remembered when Jesus came into his kingdom, but Jesus took him to his kingdom. Now, the amazing kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and he never gave such a, such a complete proof of his willingness. Now, I have known people that have struggled with this and they, they think, oh, would, would God save me? Would he take me to heaven when I die? Would he come into my life, into my heart now? Would Christ take over? Would he change me? Maybe I'm too bad. I, I can think of someone that said that to me once some years ago. It was a very respectable sort of person. But she got it into her head that she there's no way she could become a Christian. I tried to help her, and I don't know whether things ever changed. I don't know. But he asked to be remembered. Listen to what he says. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man had an amazing insight as to who Jesus was. Think of Jesus, covered with blood, having been assaulted and beaten, having been scourged with Roman thongs and spat on all over. In my career as, as a policeman, I was spat at once, uh, only once, uh, horrible experience. But the Lord Jesus Christ was spat on by people who hated him but more than just spat on, he, he was brutally treated. And this man, this dying thief, as we keep, keep calling him, saw that this, this Jesus Christ was someone that actually, the truth was, he was a king. A king dying on a cross like this? The man is, you see what the man's doing? He's starting to exercise faith. He's starting to exercise understanding for something beyond the, uh, the, the immediate, beyond the, what seems to be the situation with Jesus. Jesus really is a man from another world. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. What a beautiful thing it is that Jesus should take time for this man. Wouldn't you have thought that Jesus would have said, oh, I can't worry about you now. I've got my own problems to cope with. I'm not going to think about you and your problems. No, that isn't what happened at all. The Lord Jesus was concerned about this man. He is concerned about anyone and everyone who turns to him. Think of that. what that shows about the character of Jesus Christ. Isn't he someone that you would want to spend eternity with in paradise well this man did because of the great beauty that of the lord jesus christ and this man we know for certain did become a christian he did go to heaven think of some of the things that um he didn't do he was never baptized now Re reynold chapel is a baptist chapel you believe and i believe in being baptized um uh, I was a long time ago when I was a teenager, but that's not being baptized or christened. I heard a man speaking in a church a few years ago. He said when he christened this child that he'd become a member of the family of God. And I thought, well, where's that in the Bible? This man here was never baptized. He was never christened. He never belonged to Reynolds Chapel or any other chapel or any other church. He never went to a communion service, you know, breaking of bread and a drinking of wine to remember the Lord Jesus. He never went to one of those. He didn't do any work for Christ. He wasn't out doing all sorts of things. He never gave any money. But what he did do is he did two things. He did repent, which means he turned around from what he had before. He changed. He turned to Christ from what he had and secondly he had faith he believed in the lord jesus christ you get that so clearly don't you he says to jesus 
Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He had faith in our dear Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that really is so wonderful, what happened to this man. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There was a confession there of Christ's deity. There is a confidence in his saviourhood. Some people might think, well, if I ask Jesus Christ to forgive me of all the things I've done, done in my life, can he do it? Well, this man believed he could do it. Of course he can. Because there on the cross, Jesus' cross, he is shedding blood. That blood that Jesus is shedding is being shed. It wasn't spilt, by the way. There are one or two hymns that talk about Jesus' blood being spilt. I prefer to say shed. The blood that Jesus was shedding <clears throat> was being shed for the man's forgiveness. Because you see, what happened at the cross was that Jesus Christ took on himself this man's blame, this man's guilt, this man's punishment. It was all dealt with by a substitute. That substitute was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was punished in the man's place. Now, here's the really good news. Are you ready for this? Not just in this man's place, but in your place and my place too. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. Now, one of the really difficult things to get your head around in the Bible is this idea that Jesus Christ is God. So some people might say, oh, wasn't it unfair that Jesus should be punished for the things that we have done? That's not just, that's not fair. But you see, Jesus Christ is God. So what is really happening is that God himself is punishing himself for us. Isn't that an amazing thing? And he prays to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm just going to, have to skip over some of my notes here. There's a few things that are proved by this. Uh, one is uh, the survival of the soul after death. The man's going to die. And yet Jesus says to him, today you will be with me in paradise. And he doesn't just say it like I've just said it. He says it with added emphasis because he, it says like this in the NIV that I'm reading here. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. And so that little uh, phrase there, I tell you the truth in the old authorized version, it says, verily, verily, I say unto thee. In other versions, it says, truly, truly. Uh, so what is Jesus is saying is, look, this really is true. So this man's soul is going to survive after his physical death, which is perhaps not very far, maybe minutes away. We don't know. So it proves the survival of the soul after death. It proves the separate existence of the soul from the body. And it proves the sudden entry of the redeemed into paradise. This man had been redeemed by the man on the cross next to him. Today you will be with me in paradise. Uh, the Apostle Paul later on uh, in the Bible, he says, talks about being absent from the body and present with the Lord. And another thing that we get here proved is in the Lord Jesus' immediate response to this man, his immediate response to repentance. He doesn't... He doesn't go back to the man and start bargaining with him. And the man doesn't bargain with the Lord Jesus Christ. He immediately gives him this wonderful sense of assurance. Um, I wonder what, what, why do you think the man's attitude changed from what he originally had been? Well, I think the answer is it earlier in the chapter, if you look at verse 34. The man is hanging on a cross next to Jesus and he hears Jesus say something which is quite amazing about the people that are crucifying him. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ had forgiveness in his heart. 
It doesn't say he actually literally did forgive them, but it, forgiveness was in his heart. And I think that that is the thing that touched the heart of this dying thief. That is the thing that turned him round when he saw how different the Lord Jesus Christ was. And he turned to Christ and he got this wonderful, wonderful reply. How close is eternity? This coronavirus and all the terrible things around us makes us remember the eternity is just a step of away. And another thing about this man, I'm sorry I could go on for a long while, but let, give me a few more moments just to point this out. Another thing about this man, Jesus changed his life in this world, not just in eternity. You say, really? Yes. He was a different man from that moment onwards when he turned to Jesus in repentance and faith. What could he do? He couldn't do anything, but he did speak and he did say something. And what he said has been recorded in the Bible and has been read by people down the centuries and it has been an em enormous blessing to people. What he said, he didn't understand that that was going to happen. He didn't know anything about the Bible. But he said the Bible records what he says. One point I'm making is that your life may have been a mess. There may not be much of it left. But Jesus Christ can change your life now, not just eternity, and come into your heart now. And whatever time you've got left in this world, he can use you and change you in an amazing way. One of the things sometimes people say about this story is, oh, Jesus saw in this man something that was worth saving. Have you heard anybody say that? Not true. He had an eternal soul, but that's not why he, he got forgiven. That's not why he became a Christian. That's not why he went to paradise. That's not why his life was changed. It wasn't any merit in him at all. So I do hope that uh, what we've looked at this morning will be a blessing to people and an encouragement to those of us that do know the Lord Jesus already. And I know that many of you do. But if there is someone watching that doesn't know Christ as their own personal savior and you're not sure about what's going to happen to you when you leave this world, Please turn to Jesus. Just read this. Could anybody be more kind than our Lord Jesus Christ? More generous, more accepting, more forgiving? You have to turn. You can't carry on in the same old direction you've been on. You have to, that's what the Bible calls repenting. But turn to him in faith. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, rest for your souls. The man got rest that day. Have you? Well, if you haven't, it's there and it's available. It's on offer for you today. Thank you so much. Can I just close in a little prayer? And maybe if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you could pray this prayer, I would suggest. Lord Jesus, thank you that you accepted this man i want you to accept me dear lord please help me to turn from things in my life that are wrong turn to you and i come in faith believing that when you died on the cross not only did you die for this man but you died for me as well please take me come into my heart and life in jesus name amen Thank you very much. God bless.